right now, other than the crypto uh, and digital currency uh, bubble that burst, not, nothing like what normally, in addition to rising interest rates, takes the economy into recession is going on. We have the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. I, I don't think that should be a surprise. You know, that's full employment. The economy is currently in the fourth quarter, we're on a real GDP basis, we're at about 3% after 3.2% in the third quarter. All the forecasts of recession, if if only interest rates stay at these levels, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think we'll get a recession. Yeah, 전 세계의 현인들을 찾아서 그들의 인사이트와 의견을 들어보고 또 그를 통해서 우리의 지혜를 한 단계 업그레이드해가는 세상 유익한 프로그램 동아시아 최고의 에, 인터뷰 전문 프로그램으로 자리 잡고 있는 음, 글로벌. 머니톡인 걸 여러분들 다 알고 계시죠? 예, 글로벌 머니톡 오늘도 시작해 보겠습니다. 오늘은 어, 역시 유일한 저희의 유일한 인터뷰어 음, 중앙일보의 강남규 선임 기자님과 함께합니다. 오늘도 어서 오십시오. 안녕하세요, 강남규입니다. 네. 예. 아, 그 인트로는 어떻게 이렇게 한점 흔들림이 없이 이렇게 쫙 나와요? 어, 다 이게 먹고 사는 방법. 오케이. 있습니다. 아, 예. <웃음> 오늘은 오늘은 저희가 음. 미국 경제 전문가 한 분을 인터뷰하는 아, 그렇죠. 이분은 본인은 나는 그렇지 않다고 주장하지만 남들이 보기에는 낙관론자로 분류되는 그렇죠. 음, 그런 분이라고 들었습니다. 우리가 이제 글로벌 모니터크에서 몇 차례 인터뷰를 했던 앨런 사이나의 디시전 이코노믹스 음. 그리고 월스트리트 저널이 몇년전 얘기입니다만 예. 미국 경제 최고의 예측가로 뽑았죠. 음. 그래서 스스로는 어떤 데이터와 자기의 어떤 직관 그 다음에 이론과 역사 직관을 바탕으로 분석의 네. 결과를 얘기하는 거지 음. 낙관적으로 또는 비관적으로 보려고 한게 아니다 네. 라고 늘 저하고 인터뷰할 때 얘기를 합니다. 그러나, 그러나 음. 굉장히 낙관론자입니다. 음. 미국 경제에 대해서 그럼 우리는 질문을 던지겠군요. 아 그렇죠. 음. 그래서 오늘은 오늘 이제 글로벌 모니 토크를 보는, 아, 보는 음. 시청자분들이 네. 이 말을 좀 그, 마음에 두고 네. 이분의, 이분의 말을 좀 들었으면 좋겠습니다. 음. 그 비관론자는 명성을 얻지만 낙관론자는 네. 돈을 음. 번다. 네. 이분은 싶어요. 이분은 그런데 낙관론자인데 명성을 얻으셨네요. 명성도 없고 음. 상당히 사실은 돈도 꽤 하... 벌은 걸로. 부럽습니다. 예. <웃음> 아 그리고 저희가 이거 한 가지 더 말씀드릴 게 있는데요. 이 인터뷰는 올해 초 1월 초에 인, 녹화된 인터뷰입니다. 실은 그래서 약간 좀 시간이 지난 듯해서 저희가 따로 영상을 안 올리려고 했다가 그래도 그 당시의 시점이라는 걸 참고하셔서 들으시면 충분히 도움 될 만한. 내용이 있는 것 같아서 저희가 미리 이렇게 알려드리고 여러분께 판단하시라고 전해드립니다. 그럼 곧 인터뷰를 시작해 보죠. 대표님, 아또 번번이 인터뷰 영위해 주셔서 감사합니다. 그나저나 최근에 또이 페드가 기준금리를 올렸습니다. 음. 앞으로 2023년 이제 페드가 어떤 통화 정책을 펼칠 걸로 보이시나요? Our, our central bank has told us what they're going to do. Uh, they just uh, raised rates uh, 50 basis points in December, and they've said, and they're very clear, every single member repeats that they're going to raise interest rates some more because nominal, the nominal federal funds rate, uh, less inflation is still negative. So we have negative real rates, and restrictive monetary policy Uh, is indicated by positive, a positive real rate, and we don't have that in the funds rate right now. So they're going to keep going, but at a diminished pace. Uh, and uh, wherever they end up, the members are now saying over 5% on the nominal on the federal funds rate, wherever they end up, they say when they get there, they will keep the funds rate at that level for a long, long, long time and wait and watch to see what happens to inflation. So I believe them. And indeed that has been my forecast of the federal funds rate for a long time, that for 2023, they would raise the funds rate, nominal funds rate, essentially a quarter point a quarter, a full point during the year. Uh, and that would take that funds rate to five and three eighths And now 17 out of 19 of the members in the last uh, meeting. Uh, and, and I think once we get there, uh, they, they're saying they're going to hold the rate at that level. And I think we have to believe them, whether they're right or wrong in doing that isn't the issue. They're going to do it. 
And as inflation comes down, that five and three eighths, five and a quarter, five and a half, somewhere in that range, federal funds rate, nominal, as inflation comes down, say to 4% on the Fed's measure of uh, consumption deflator inflation, it'll, it'll turn positive. And what they've said is it has to be at least positive, the funds rate minus inflation by one point. So I don't think they, uh, they stop until they get that one point differential. And right now on our forecast, it looks like it'll be about five and three eighths. And that's kind of what the Fed is saying, five and three eighths in 2023. And then it will stay there the rest of 2023, 2024, probably into 2025, a long time. Permanently high nominal interest rates and positive uh, real interest rates as inflation comes down. Uh, and, uh, and even if we were to get to the magic number of 2%, their target, they're still going to keep the rate higher. Well, the financial markets don't believe them. The financial markets think the funds rate shouldn't go that high because uh, the latest running rates of inflation are a lot lower. I, I think uh, I, I wouldn't fight with the Fed. They control uh, the interest rate and they do control now the sales of treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities. That has a big impact on longer term rates. Uh, so uh, I believe them, but they've actually come to my forecast and my forecast isn't changing. So five and three A's, middle of the year, that's where they stop, but it will stay over 5% for another couple of years oh. until uh, or if inflation gets to 2%. But even if it does, they'll still leave that rate high because inflation at 2% would be a real funds rate of 3% plus. So maybe the funds rate could come down a little bit, but equilibrium in the eyes of the Federal Reserve in the real federal funds rate is somewhere between 2 and 3%. 사실은 지금 그 명목과 실질 금리 기준의 음. 기준 금리의 명목과 실질 금리를 가지고 말씀을 하시는데 여전히 인플레이션을 감안한다면 지금 인플레이션이 높지 않습니까? 네, 그럼요. 물가가 7% 오르는데 그럼 기준 금리도 7% 돼야 된다는 그렇죠. 말인데. 그렇죠. 그러나 이제 차츰 차츰 패드가 음. 올해와 내년에 걸쳐서 네. 실질 금리를 플러스로 만들어 갈 것이다. 음, 그러니까 물가보다는 금리가 높을 것이다. 아, 그렇죠. 음. 물가 상승률보다는 금리가 높은 음. 그런 과절. 그렇다고 해서 그러면 금리를 급격... 올려서 만드느냐가 아니라 물가가 내려갈 거란 말이군요. 동시에 같이 어, 한쪽에서는 기준 금리를 올리고 네. 그래서 5.3% 내지는 5.5% 올린 음. 다음에 어, 기다린다든지 아니면 음. 그, 예, 상당 기간 기다리겠죠. 예. 그 사이에 이제 물가 상승률은 떨어져서 아하. 어, 자연스럽게 어, 올해와 아니면 내년 초에 음. 교차를 해서 역사적인 어떤 그 실질 금리의 역사적인 평균치 그러니까 될 것이다. 이, 2에서 3 아니 이에서 음. 3%를 음. 근접하도록 만들 가능성이 크다. 그 실질 금리로. 예, 실질 금리가 2에서 3. 그럼 물가보다 명목 금리가 2 내지 3% 포인트가 높을 만큼 수준. 높을 만큼 아니면 그 수준에 버금갈 만큼 음. 그렇게 말씀을 하십니다. 어, 상당히 그럼 고금리가 예상돼야 되는데. 그렇죠. 장기간 고금리를 자, 고금리가 장기간 이어질 것이다. 예. 음. 바로 그럼 제가 좀 질문 좀 드려 보죠. 예. 대표님, 그 고금리에 대한 말씀을 방금 해 주셨는데 이 고금리의 가장 큰 걱정은 이렇게 고금리가 유지가 되면 과연 실물 경제가 이런 고금리를 견뎌낼 수 있을 것인가? 아, 어, 그게 제일 걱정인데 고금리 시대의 실물 경제에 대해서는 어떻게 바라보고 계십니까? Oh, well, we've had the, the economy growing with with rates in double digits uh, and uh, inflation rates very high. You know, the interest rates actually by themselves don't have much impact on spending. You have to have big changes in interest rates to affect business capital spending, to affect uh, consumer spending. It, what really counts is credit availability, the availability of funds uh, in the liquidity in the system. And in the system right now, the household sector in aggregate is, is very liquid. Uh, the savings rate is down. 
but the uh, uh, assets, the value of assets and of liquidity in household balance sheet is high. Same is true for the business sector. Same is true for the financial institutions. They are in very good shape liquidity wise, balance sheet wise compared to where they were in 2006, seven, when uh, interest rates rose, uh, financial institutions failed and fell because of credit risk problems, because the internal, uh, the balance sheets of every sector in the US economy were in terrible shape. They were way overextended. They are not now. They're resilient, they're strong underneath. So uh, interest rates alone, I, I don't think all by themselves, uh, can slow us down a little bit, mainly housing, but I don't think these levels of interest rates will take the economy in real GDP into negative territory. So we are not predicting a recession. We are 25% risk of recession, over 60% uh, sustained expansion, real growth in the economy in, in 2023 in the 2.5% range. But that's a minority view. That's optimistic. And one of the reasons is what I just said. Interest rates alone, historically, in the business cycle, by themselves, even though they will go up, will take housing down and some other interest rate sensitive spending categories, but not the whole economy. Other bad things have to happen. Credit crunch, liquidity crisis, failing financial institutions. And uh, right now, other than the crypto uh, in digital currency uh, bubble that burst, uh, not, nothing like what normally, in addition to rising interest rates, takes the economy into recession is going on. And so what do we have? We have the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. I, I don't think that should be a surprise. Uh, you know, that's full employment. The economy is currently in the fourth quarter, we're on a real GDP basis, we're at about 3% after 3.2% in the third quarter. All the forecasts of recession, if, if only interest rates stay at these levels, I, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think we'll get a recession. We'll grow, we think, two, two and a half percent, which is above our potential rate of growth. 아, 근데 참이 통념에서 약간 어긋나는 음. 우리의 그러니까 금리 자체는 네. 지금 현재 미국인들의 가계 음. 소비의 가계 대차 대표 자산 상태를 봤을 때 그렇게 음. 큰 영향을 미치지 않는다. 그 부채가 별로 없다는 말이죠. 아, 그렇죠. 음. 그 다음에 그러나 다 이제 기업의 투자라든지 음. 어, 그런 데 영향을 줄 수는 있다. 그리고 또 부동산에 영향을 줄수 있다. 음. 그런 의미에서 어, 우리 그 앨런 사이, 사이나이 대표는 침체가 발생할 확률을 25% 수준으로 봅니다. 음. 고금리라도 침체까지는 안갈 것이다. 아, 그렇죠. 음, 그렇다면 생각보다 더 고금리가 더 길어질 수 있다는 뜻인 것 같은데. 어, 뭐 역설적으로 어, 인터뷰를 이어가 보죠. 예. 예. 대표님, 그 어, 미국 경제 침체가 침체에 빠질 확률이 25% 안팎이라고 말씀을 하셨는데 음. 이 이제 얼핏 듣기에는 좀 이해가 잘 감이 잘안 옵니다. 음. 이 역사적인 어떤 그 침체 확률, 역사적인 평균치하고 견주어 봤을 때 25%라면 높은 건가요, 낮은 건가요? Uh, it is not so high for me. Uh, in 2005, 6, 7, when uh, we were moving into the Great Recession, uh, the odds I put on recession, uh, I thought one was coming. It, it was a horribly fragile US financial system with a housing bubble that burst and stock market bubble burst, multiple bubbles burst and took us down, not just higher interest rates. Uh, I was at 50 percent plus and for me that was the same thing as saying i expected a recession so uh, i have been as high uh, risk for uh, a recession uh, as 35 percent so our our assessed risk of a uh, recession is down uh, has come down the last three four months uh, you, you know i know it's a minority view uh, and it, 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 if it happens, uh, the, a recession will be uh, the most forecasted recession ever in history. Usually it happens and nobody forecasts it, except me. <laughs> but, but this time, 
uh, it, it's it's the business cycle. There's so much in the economy, strength underneath, plus the, that labor market. The labor market really has to cave in uh, to get a recession going. So, uh, you know, the data of the recession is being put out. I, I don't see in the next two or three months that it would come out. If it happens, probably around March or April, we, we'll watch and see. Uh, and a mild recession would be about six months. Uh, a bad recession would be a year. Uh, so sometime, because markets are ahead of the economy, uh, sometime we will have a new bull market, equity bull market, uh, I think this year, sometime. But whether it began the last couple of days, I don't think it did, or begins in September, October. Wow, long period of time. The last equity bull market that happened, I, I, I immediately uh, forecasted. Uh, I, I think it was on uh, February, February, uh, it, it was a, a week after it began. We had a two month downturn in 2020. We had a collapse. Uh, and then the uh, new bull market happened very, very fast because we, we shot out of the pandemic with tremendous stimulus uh, and only had a two month downturn. And uh, we were a few weeks, the stock market began a new equity bull market a few weeks ahead of the beginning of the upturn of the economy. So uh, it was a very short uh, bear market and boom, a new equity bull market. And I did, I, I was a week late, but that's not bad, a week late. Nobody else was saying we were in a equity bull market, but it sure looked like it and it was. And we've been in a bear market now since uh, about a year ago, very early uh, January 2nd. Uh, was the previous peak, January 2nd, 2022. We've had bear markets that lasted two, three years in, in history. So it's, I don't think it's over yet, but sometime this year, about the best I can do. It's a lot of risk, and then there are a lot of risk and risk and risk, but there are a lot of risk and risk, but there are a lot of risk. 훨씬 더 침체에 빠지지 않을, 확, 안, 빠지지 않을, 않을 확률이 좀 높은 높다. 것 같다. 예. 어, 대표님 저는 아직도 좀 궁금함이 풀리지 않아서 음, 그렇게 높은 금리를 유지하는 그 긴축 하에서 어, 경기 침체 확률이 낮다고 말씀하시니까 그럴 수 있는 미국 경제라면 왜 코로나 전에는 그렇게 저금리를 인위적으로 유지했는지 그것도 참 궁금한데 왜 그렇게 보시는지 좀 설명을 좀더 해주실 수 있겠습니까? Well, you know, there's tremendous liquidity in the system, in the banking system, and uh, funds availability, which is one of the reasons to think we can avoid recession, because uh, the U.S. banking system, the ones we know about, uh, it, it really is they're they're in very sound condition in part because of the regulations that were put into place after the great financial crises of 2006 to 2009. So uh, there are plenty of funds and the repurchase monies that circulate within these banks represent a lot of liquidity, but they're not really lending that much. They're very tough on lending standards, which is a good thing. Uh, and so we don't have uh, in the private sector, the kind of credit risk exposure and overexposed uh, in, in the uh, consumption, the housing, the, the, the uh, individual consumer sector and in the business sector, we, we just don't have uh, excessive uh, lending risk. Uh, it's very positive. Uh, I, I've never seen the as we measure it, and we have an index of the financial condition of the household sector, that's the aggregate household sector, the aggregate of consumers. Uh, our index, which reflects savings on the balance sheet, the state of the labor market, they have jobs, generates income, uh, debt service to income, uh, liabilities and debt relative to assets. Uh, 
it, it, they're not overextended in aggregate. Well, they're going down uh, after having had a, a odd surge upward because of the rush to buy housing in certain areas uh, on the pandemic. Uh, and now with higher interest rates and much more costly mortgages, that is higher monthly payments, it's tougher for new home buyers to get that first home. And for existing home buyers, for existing homes, uh, the monthly payments are very high. So uh, interest rates have, have created that. Uh, so uh, uh, housing demand, housing sales down. Uh, we are short supply, but the demand is way down and prices are coming down. I think they'll continue to come down uh, for another a year or so until interest rates peak out. But here's the thing about housing, very interest rate sensitive. Interest rates lever the, the monthly payments. Lots of families have fixed rates that are very low in the era of those low rates that were close to zero, mortgage rates of two, two and a half, three percent. Uh, and those uh, mortgages are not coming up for renewal for some years. A lot of older families uh, don't have any outstanding mortgages. So I think uh, the extent of the housing decline and decline in prices it will be limited because of, of what I just said. For the whole economy, it's not well known that residential construction as a category of real GDP is just 3.2% of real GDP. State and local government purchases is over 11% of real GDP. So everywhere you go in the United States, there's construction and there are people working there employed by the state and local government sector, but the money came out of these programs and that's strong, that's positive. Well, it's 11% of real GDP against residential construction, which is just 3.2%. Now, if I add in the derivative effects from a bad housing sector on furniture and all of that, and also add in the wealth effect of lower housing asset prices, well, yes. So maybe I get five or 6% of real GDP. On the wealth effect, it's not what it used to be. There's a lot of inequality in the United States. And so uh, uh, the, the, the very wealthy, uh, in, in, in the wealth effect is not as big as it used to be when more people uh, were subject to falling home prices. The, the very wealthy, the propensity to consume the loss in uh, uh, income because payments are higher on mortgages is very, very small. So we don't think the wealth effect is as big as it was before, but all told six, 7% of real GDP directly and indirectly from a recession in housing, continuing declines in housing prices on average, but the state and local government sector is over 11%. Federal government purchases including now money that's being spent for Ukraine. We just $48 billion in the latest budget, 1.7 trillion that was passed just by Congress. That's over 6% of real GDP. So the government sector in the US is coming on, 17% of real GDP. You add to that 70% of real GDP as the consumer, the job market's tight. That's 85% of real GDP going up. Housing's going down. How can I forecast a recession with those weights? I, I can't. Now, if, how, if, if the labor market caves in and people can't get disposable income and they're thrown out of work, yeah, that'll do it. So we watch the labor market and see how that goes. But right now it's very tight, fully employed. Federal Reserve would like to see it weak. It's, that, it's very strong. So, so the recession isn't there yet. It's, it's in the eyes of the beholders. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> well, look, 60% odds on soft landing. And so I don't want to minimize the risk of recession, all the problems 
uh, that could give rise to it. Twenty-five percent risk. So we're watching for it. 그 보통 이제 음. 그 앨런 사이나이 대표 같은 경우 평소에 네. 그 굉장히 그 은행의 대출 여력 음. 내지는 은행의 대차 대조표 음. 그 다음에 수익력 이런 금융 시스템에 불안이 없는 한 <웃음> 네. 침체는 깊이, 깊이 오지 않는다라는 음. 그 논지를 펴는 사람이거든요. 예, 예. 제가 이제 미국이 가지고 있는 그 미국 시중은행과 음. 미국의 미국의 금융 아 죄송합니다 미국의 금융권이 가지고 있는 자산 구조가 상당히 음. 탄탄하기 때문에 네. 그렇게 심각한 어떤 충격은 음. 그러니까 금융 위기라든지 음. 아니면 침 깊은 침체라든지 그런 위기 가능성은 낮다. 예, 예. 그렇게 보신다는 거죠. 예. 음. 대표님 얼핏 대표님이 자산 시장 특히 주가의 움직임에 대해서 말씀 말씀을 하신 말씀을 하셨습니다. 그렇다라면은. 어, 미국 주식에 관심이 많은 한국 투자자들이 어떤 신호를 보고 이 태도를 정할면 좋을까요? It's a very rocky market now. Uh, we're still in a, uh, I think, a bear market, bouncing around. Uh, and every time uh, we get some good news on inflation, the Federal Reserve reminds us that they're going to keep raising interest rates. And uh, they've said more than that. In the last minutes, they said our policy. Restricts demand and cuts inflation down, which is our number one goal. It does it through financial conditions, and the stock market is part of that. So they have really said we don't want the stock market to be too strong. So I don't think it's time to buy till the Federal Reserve stops saying that. Two Fed speakers repeated the mantra, uh, the religion: uh, we're going to raise interest rates, and once we raise them, we're going to keep them up high for a long time. Well, they don't know. They haven't told us how high they're going to go into the fives, but maybe it'll be higher. It killed the rally in the stock market. Well, uh, now in terms of earnings, we're a little highly valued as it is, so it can't go anywhere as long as the Fed Reserve is doing this. Uh, I'm not going to fight the Fed. So it, investors, it's, it's too soon to buy. Uh, I, sometime this year, I think we start a new equity bull market, but not now. So you have to stay tuned. And when Sinai says, Sinai says, "Aha, it's okay," uh, then the individual investors can buy with both feet. But not now. It's too early. 지금까지 페드의 네. 관계자들은 <웃음> 비공식적으로 음. 나는 공식적으로 자산 시장이 음. 음. 예, 특히 주식 시장이 필요 음. 이상으로 화랑이 되는 것은 음. 그 원치 않는다는 시그널을 해 왔거든요. 어찌 보면 음. 사실은 그게 제일 신경 쓰였을지도 몰라요. 그렇죠. 물가보다 물가보다도 그 주식가 몰라서 생기는 양극화 이런 거에 대한 경, 그 정치적 부담이 그렇죠. 페드를 강한 고금리로 이끄는 음. 어찌 보면 솔직한 가장 큰 원인일 수도 있다는 생각을 하는데. 이 사이나이 박사의 음. 그 말로 표현으로 음. 말한다라면은 물가와 자산 가격 두 개가 동시에 음. 물가를 압박하는 <웃음> 예. 효과를 좀 억제해 보려 음. 하는 게 페드의 내신 목표였다. 예. 높여, 높여, 아 죄송한 목표이다라고 음. 말을 했는데 음. 실제로 그 자산 가격에 대한 그 시그널이 바뀌는 시점. 음. 그러니까 더 이상 뭐 자산 가격이 너무 주수, 주식 시 주가가 올라가는 거에 대해서 우리가 음. 연연해 한다든지, 아니 음. 막 막겠다든지 그런 그런 말을 하지 않는 순간 음. 그때쯤이면은 미국 주식이 음. 그 본격적으로 반등할 가능성이 있기 때문에 그때쯤 들어가 봐라. 네, 전반적으로는 뭐 굉장히 클리어한. 그렇죠. 음, 아직은 아니 아닌 것 같다. 네, 아직은 음, 아니다. 그런 건데 저희가 앞서 또 근데 다만 말씀드렸습니다만 이 인터뷰는 1월 초에 그러니까 나스닥의 랠리가 시작되기 좀 전, 예, 네, 직전에 네, 했던 직전에 인터뷰이기 어, 때문에 이제 그 당시의 시각이 좀 반영됐다는 걸 여러분들께서는 좀 같이 예. 이해하고 어, 이해를 해주시면 좋겠습니다. 자, 오늘도 글로벌 머니토 어, 세상 유익한 인터뷰. <웃음> <웃음> 여러분께 전해드리고 나니까 굉장히 뿌듯하고 아, 그렇습니까? 어, 네, 자꾸 이제 저의 자만심은 계속 커지고 있습니다. 그 댓글에 <웃음> 내지는 그아 댓글에 댓글이 아니고 참이 얘기 우스갯소리로 음. 아 최근에 음. 후배 기자 한 명이 네. 3%의 자금력이 동원된 음. 섭외 때문에 음. 이 어떤 뭐랄까 나름대로 이제 세계적인 인물 내지는 음. 석학 그 다음에 전문가 어, 그 <웃음> 투자자들을 이, 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 인터뷰한 거 아니냐. 음. 그래서 제가 속으로 조금 야 정말 그 자금력이 음. 힘좀 발휘됐으면 좋겠다라고 하... 얘기를 말을 한 적이 있습니다. 네, 
뭐 앞으로는 모르겠습니다만 지금까지는 저희는 이 글로벌 머니톡에서는 <웃음> 단한 푼의 인터뷰로도 그렇죠. 어, 음. 지, 지불하지 못했습니다. 뭐 네, 불행하게도 지금까지 네. 인터뷰 응해준 인터뷰에 응해준 분들에게 음. 사례를 하고 싶습니다만은 네. 못 하고 있습니다. 네. 아 오늘 음. 제가 이 말씀을 드리는 것은 글로로 이제 흔히 말하는 이제 국내에서 해외 연사들 음. 스피커들 초대했을 때 적지 않은 보상을 해드리거든요. 글로벌 모니 토크에 나오시는 분들에게는 음. 어, 충분한 사례를 하지 못해서 네. 내지는 하, 사례를 해본 적이 음. 없어서 네. 정말 죄송하다라고 음. 말씀드리겠습니다. 네. 오늘 글로벌 모니 토크 여기서 마무리하겠습니다. 고맙습니다. 감사합니다.